did look like physics did look like magic. Yeah, probably. One day I think physics kind of does even today when you think real hard about it. Well, did anybody sit here last time? No. Uh, Thompson out. Or Thompson out. So, yeah. so you're going to take it. All right. Part of the video will be a picture of darkness. Basically, the range. So, for the first couple of weeks, I usually have my cheat sheet up with me so that I can sort of pretend that I remember names. Uh, I cannot find my cheat sheet, so I'm going to have to embarrass myself. At least it's not April and I'm not knowing your name. <laughs> so, I apologize. Uh, Holden. Holden. Kong. Kong. Aaron. Uh, Thomas and then Alex. And Aaron, you're officially listed under a different name. Yeah, Christopher Phillips. Okay. Yeah. Sorry to be dredging up those memories of your other name. Okay. I did have a student who wanted to be called a different name because he really hated his dad and was named after his dad, so he did not want to be called by yeah. the I other understand. I mean, yeah. Me and my dad share the same first and last name, so I get called Chris and Aaron, and I can to answer to both. <laughs> ah. And I've known other people who have two different names, but what they're called immediately identifies them to which group they're talking to. Mm -hmm. So for some reason, they decide to introduce themselves by one name in one group and a different name in a different group. I'm probably the only, I think I might be the only guy with an unusual name. Because I'm, I was named after the guy from Catcher in the Rye. Yeah, I was wondering. That's funny thing is, my mom used to love Calvin and Hobbes, and she was going to name me Calvin. <laughs> All right, sure, you know. Yeah. We get named for various reasons. Yep. All right. Uh, I'll start out with any questions. I believe Holden, you, you actually had some questions concerning the. Yes, the. Uh, yeah, I, I Start up. could, I knew everything except, except 9, 10, and 11 in the, uh, on the prep, on that right. uh, entry yeah. assignment. So which ones were 9, 10, and 11? Uh, 9, it was asking for what the uh, bulk modules was. No, I was talking oh, about no, no. the entry, of course, entry assignment. Oh, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. No, no problem. fine, I... I know number nine was you attempt, you record all your data and you do all the, and write everything down, but you attempt half the prob, half, half of the, uh, ses, the half results? Of the, yeah, half the questions in the lab. All right, so basically when you're doing the lab, you've got 
three main parts to it. There's data, results, and analysis. And you must do a majority of each of these sections in order to possibly get a passing grade. Now I've had students who fill it all out, but they do it so badly they still end up failing. But <clears throat> so if you do only half of this, you have not done a majority. The majority is half plus something. Mm -hmm. So if you've done, if you've only done half of this, that's an automatic F. If you have only done half of or less of these two, well, that's like you never handed it in. If you've done half or less of all three of these, that's worse than not handing it in. You've wasted my time. So that is the H. Oh. And I have had students hand it in. Uh, there's one student in particular. I can still picture the student who caused me to come up with the H. People with uh, nothing, it's still H, right? If you do nothing? Yes. If, if you do nothing and hand it in, it's an H. If you do nothing and don't hand it in, it's a better grade. That the H is the penalty from you have annoyed me. Yes. So what would uh, I will be honest, I kinda because I barely I rarely do anything with spreadsheets, I kinda I didn't know how what uh how I didn't remember how to do the graph until maybe like a day ago, and uh, I forgot a lot of the uh, stuff that I learned on that day about the lab. So I wound up with, uh, I was able to get three done. What would it be? All right, so for the analysis. Yeah. I, All right, so if, if you handed this in right now, that would be, and you would not get a grade higher than that because yeah. you need to do at least, you have to do a majority of the analysis along with the others. Yeah, I, I, and I didn't know if uh, asking any of the other guys for help on the on at least on number one would be considered a K. No, uh, if you wrote down their answers, that's cheating. If you discuss it with them, I have no problem with that at all. Oh, okay. And it might be a fine line, but uh, you know, I think you'll know when you go. Now, what did you say? All right, now tell me again. Yeah. I mean, that, that's over the line. That's, like word for word, that's what you're Yeah, I mean, especially it's when it's word for word, I become really suspicious. Yeah. Now, sometimes you, there's, I mean, there's adjustment call. If it's awkward wording for awkward wording, yeah, that I'm willing to bet you just copied somebody. Mm -hmm. If it's perfect wording for perfect wording, that becomes a little bit. It, oh. Usually, if someone's copying someone else's work, it shows up. In more than one place. So it would be okay if I asked both of them how, asked both of them what the uh, mathematical relationship between the uh, spring constant and the. Uh, <clears throat> yes, it would be okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, because I just. I mean, I answered it, but. You're not convinced you did it well? Yeah. Well, let's, let's take a look at that, though. Yeah, I always have a hard time describing, like, how how they're compared mathematically. Like the rest of them I didn't have an issue on, it's just that. All right. That one. So what's the classic equation for a line? Uh, rise over front. Wait, that's the slope. slope. I'm talking the equation for a line. Y equals mx plus b. All right, so instead of m, I'm gonna use this because again, we use m for too many other things. I don't wanna mess it up there. All right, so that's the classic equation. So when you're in, when you're doing the classic equation, which is the y? Which is x? Uh, you would have the no math class. So which, the y is usually the b, right? Oh. Uh, no, looking for um, which axis is y, which axis is x. Oh, that the y axis is y and the x axis. The y is x. Is, uh, vertical. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's what. Oh, okay. that. Everything. I, I will agree. The y axis is y, but uh, look for something more specific. Yeah. All right. So this is the classic equation for something plotted on this setup here. Now, what you plotted was, uh, you did displacement versus force? Yes, that's correct. Yes, uh, displacement as the, yeah, displacement was, is vertical. Yep. And 
force is horizontal. Okay. So when I am, so in essence what I'm doing is I need to take the equation I'm looking for, mm -hmm. and I need to, just like this is solved for y, I need to solve for displacement. I need to figure out displacement equals what? So we start out with the equation, Hooke's Law, uh, and I'm ignoring, ignoring direction here. So we have Hooke's Law, F equals K delta X, mm -hmm. except I want delta X all by itself, so I need to get rid of the K, I need to get the K over to the other side, and how do you do it? Uh, you divide both sides by delta X. Right, okay. That's taking it the long way. Oh, K, because you want to get yeah. delta X by itself. So. Yeah, oh. so divide both sides by K. Oh. So you end up with delta X is equal to... Uh, All right, I'll be right back. Delta X, much better, uh, would be F over K. Now, to get it into that form, we basically need something times our horizontal variable. So that is just 1 over K times F. And then there's that plus B over there, which means, well, I can just always do plus 0. Yeah. So if I'm looking at paralleling it, that's Y equals slope X plus B, paralleling it. So my intercept should be zero. Uh, my x value, my x variable and my force variable are parallel, and then my slope parallels with one over k. And then displacement of y. So the question was? Um, what, what? I'm sorry, I thought. Okay. Uh, what is the mathematical relation between spring constant k and the slope? The yeah, slope is one over spring constant. So it's the slope well, reciprocal. Yeah, that's the two. Yeah. Okay, okay. You can just write it as slope yeah. equals one over k. But of course, Thanks, I you. didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want to get in trouble. So. And so the second question: What's the spring constant? Yeah, I think I might be able to get that <laughs> now. Uh, so, all right. Uh, because I kept forgetting that we had Monday off. I did remember before coming to school on Monday, though. Uh, if you want to get that to me next Monday, I'm fine. Oh, okay. So we could uh, hand this in next Monday. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh. Okay. We're just starting now. If you got it ready to hand in, typically I don't ask for them. I just assume that the day that they're due, they'll just be handed in. Was that yeah. <clears throat> but uh, if you want to take till Monday and hand it in Monday, I'm good with that. All right. Other questions concerning? Uh, why don't we start? Any other questions concerning course entry assignment? All right. Any other questions concerning the lab? All right. Other questions, Aaron. I believe you had some. Uh, yeah, it was number nine on that um, on the uh, practice questions that you gave us. Um, so on number nine, you were asking us to find bulk modules, which I found, and the compared answers is correct. Right. Uh, when I did compressibility, uh, our numbers didn't quite match up. So, so this was number nine from the textbook. Yes, that's correct. All right. Well, it might not be number nine from the textbook. I just wrote them down different than the, oh the yeah. the ninth problem that was the same yeah yeah so that's, that's not helpful three four five six uh, can't help that's very strong I think it is six seven, seven, eight. Eight. yeah I think yeah. is this the pressure of the 0.3 gigapascals is applied to a block of volume yeah yeah okay. that's correct all right if the volume decreases by 0.004 with the bulk modulus 
and what is the compressibility. Uh, compressibility should be just the reciprocal of the bulk modulus. Yeah, or maybe I just typed it in wrong to the calculator. I'm trying it now. Yep, that's what I exactly what I did. I must type it in there. Okay, all right. Well, that answers that. <laughs> Thanks for throwing a softball out there to, to start us off. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes. The math problem on the uh, blackboard site. The two numbers that you divide into each other. Oh yeah. Are you ever gonna explain that? Anyone figure it out? <sighs> I try. It won't be the exact numbers because I can never remember. I you know what? Write down the numbers anyway. Yeah. Uh, so five, seven, two, eight, nine, one, six, six, three, four, two, five, five. All right. Math versus science. It's, it's amazing how brainwashed people get in math class, but the answer. Uh, yeah. Done. That's the answer. <laughs> Pardon? Uh, that's the answer. Yes, that's the answer. That's that's the answer that I thought of, but I didn't want to say. Oh, you should have gone for it. No, it's, there's nothing wrong with an improper fraction. Yeah. <laughs> and also emphasizing the fact that fractions is just a division problem. I think in, over the, since I've been asking this question, I've been doing it for years, I think I may have had two classes where someone who had not seen you do it before has actually done it, who figured it out, or and was willing to speak up. I, should say. I imagine there are a number of people who are just sitting there quietly. Yeah, I mean, the, the fear of making a mistake in public is. is a detriment, I think, ultimately. Very common. Yeah, I. If I was unsure, I would have stayed silent. I'll be honest. I'm also kind of not the most confident person in the world. Either. We will all make plenty of mistakes in here. So, my general advice: as soon as you can get over that fear, the better off we'll all be. But uh, I do understand the fear. Yeah, I just want to give a shout out to John Fulford. He was a colleague of mine, because I would sit there quietly. Mm -hmm. He was the one who I, in faculty meetings, would keep asking questions to make sure he understood stood perfectly. And that, that did a whole lot for me to see someone else going, wait a second, I just want to make sure I'm understanding what you're saying. All right, uh, is the quiz today? Oh, it was supposed to be on Monday. Yeah, I, I couldn't write. I, I'm missing a key piece of paper, which I wrote this stuff down. Uh, so we'll make that Monday. That's the quiz on chapter 13. And if I remember correctly, you said the quiz was two problems? Yeah. I will take two of the problems that were assigned for which you have solution. I will change the numbers, and that will be the quiz. Okay, I'm sure that do that. I like how you work on problems. And I like how you. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not trying to speak over you. I, I was just going to say I like how you solve it out. Most teachers don't do that. Just kind of uh, leave it up in the air. Yeah. Well, but, you know, uh, all I did was cut and paste. So. Oh really? Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There are occasionally yeah. there are ones where there's a mistake and I will go in with my own edits to it or make a comment. Well, there was a couple that you wrote out like an explanation. Of okay. Like all right. So you're welcome for those. Yeah. But mainly cut days. And one of the reasons I do that, again, is that fear of looking like a complete idiot in public. Although, hey, you know, I've done it too many times. Occasionally I have a student go, your solution is are wrong. Well, what? That's the book solution's wrong. Mm -hmm.
deep childhood scars. All right. Other questions at the moment? All right, so we last left off. We looked at simple harmonic motion. Let's see if it goes out to about there. Simple harmonic motion, whatever is in simple harmonic motion obeys Hooke's law. From that, uh, we discern that we can describe the position at some time t as a sum amplitude times sine or cosine, whichever one you happen to like at that moment. Uh, so in class, I think I did cosine, so let's stick with cosine. And then from that, the velocity at some time t is going to be negative a omega sine omega t plus phi. And the acceleration at time t is equal to negative a omega squared cosine omega t plus phi. That these were solutions to something in subharmonic motion because that force would be set equal to mass times acceleration. Omega is the angular frequency. A is the amplitude. Phi is the phase shift. And usually in textbook problems, phi is equal to zero. And you just set it up so that, you know, if you start something out at its maximum value, then you're dealing probably a cosine, and phi is zero, because you're at an extreme. If it starts at equilibrium, probably use sine and let phi equal zero. But in reality, when you do an actual experiment, phi is probably not going to be zero, because you have something oscillating back and forth when you hit the start button on the lab quest of, for the motion. You know, it could be, who knows at what point you actually started it. Uh, so, angular frequency in, for something in simple harmonic motion, the square root of k over m. So k being the spring constant, and m being the, the mass that's being oscillated. The period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of m over k. And the frequency is 1 over 2 pi times the square root of k over m. And then combining these two ideas, we get that omega is equal to 2 pi times the frequency. And, oh. and we also have, for a wave, And this is going to show up more in the next chapter uh, than this one, but the speed of a wave is equal to the frequency times the wavelength. Uh, yes, what is, what is that supposed to be? Uh, t over 2 pi? This? Yeah. Oh, uh, that's 1 over 2 pi. It's the reciprocal. The frequency is 1 over the period, so it's just, I flipped the period. Oh, okay. And I think that basically catches us up other than units. What are the SI units for period? Seconds. The SI units for frequency? Hertz. The SI units for angular frequency? Oh, right. Wait, no. Yeah, I think it was radians per second. Yep. I remember that's a, that's a true SI unit, and hertz is just a, uh, is an SI derived. Yeah, otherwise known as a derived unit. Just something I 
Uh, this would be referred to instead of a true SI unit. They're both true SI units. This is uh, a base unit. Oh, in that's terms of the language. Oh, I see. Oh. Yeah. All right. Close enough. And I don't think we actually did a, a problem with it. So let's actually go through a problem. So I have, we'll start out with the frictionless surface. And so this would be, let's make that three meters. And this is equilibrium. So what does equilibrium mean? Or you said the total force is zero, right? I said the net force. Net force, okay. Yeah. All right, so force. yes, you're right. It also means two other things. One equal force is cancel out. Uh, I sort of lump that into the same thing. Oh. Let's write down at least that one. Total force or net force is equal to zero newtons. a zero that's been stacked. What is Newton's second law of motion? Uh, F equal uh, M times A. Yes. So if the total force is zero, what else must be zero? Acceleration. Yeah, okay, so acceleration is zero. So whatever we come up with here, acceleration better be zero when it's going through this point right here. Uh, zero meters per second squared. And what is acceleration? Besides force over mass. I'm talking just basic definition of acceleration. Change of velocity over time. All right, and so if acceleration is zero, what else must be zero? Force. No, not necessarily velocity. Yeah. Direction? Change in velocity. Pardon? The change in velocity. Yes. That's the third thing. Change in velocity is zero meters per second. So if one of these is true, the other two have to be true. Recognize this thing is oscillating back and forth. The change in velocity is zero is happening for a very brief time. So it because it very it basically reaches a peak and then it starts going back. Alright, so let us, uh, I'm going to pull it out, uh, two meters, and I'm going to let go. So now I'm going to oscillate back and forth. We are assuming that this is an ideal spring. In other words, their base looks long. So, uh, oh, I need to give you a mass here. Uh, let's see, let's make it a four kilogram mass. And, you know what? Let's figure out what the spring constant is. Let me give you some more information. That same spring. I let it dangle vertically, and it dangled vertically, I'll just say three meters, and then I put a five kilogram mass on it, and that spring is now five meters long. It is an equilibrium here. So the question is, what is the spring constant? Five kilograms. Five kilograms. Yes, five kilograms. Oh, five kilograms. So it's an equilibrium when it has five. Oh, it stretched five meters by a five kilogram mass. Five kilogram mass. So I don't know what I'm saying now. 
still kind of waking up. I probably should come up with an answer myself. I got it. Yeah. Uh, 24.5 um, Newton meters. Yeah, Newton. Is Newton over meter? Yeah. No, not, yeah, not, yeah, not Newton meters. meters. Newton's per meter. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, how'd you get that? How'd you uh, do that? The how do you do that? So Hooke's law is the applied force, or no, excuse me, it's the negative of the spring constant times the displacement is equal to the force force on the yeah. spring. So you have a five kilogram mass, five times nine point eight is which is acceleration due to gravity. Yeah. So um, if we look at the forces acting on it, we have the weight acting down, mm -hmm. and what's acting up on it? The spring. Okay, so force from the spring. Mm -hmm. uh, this is equal to mg. So, and, and appropriately assumed it takes place on Earth, although I didn't state that. Uh, so, 5 times 9.8. 49. 49 newtons. Mm -hmm. All right, total force is zero because it's in equilibrium, and this is equal to k delta x. Uh, what happened to the minus sign? Why did I not bother writing the minus sign? So, we ignore the direct or I guess if it's going down, it's negative, so the negatives cancel out. Is that? Uh, how do you, what negative cancels out? Uh, well, you have the negative that's in front of the, the variable, and then the direction is also negative. Or, is this well, that's up? not negative, no, never mind. Uh, you hit some of the key words, just the wrong order. You want to take another shot at it, or someone else? It's possible yeah. that you yeah. it just came out wrong. I, th I think I'm a little bit mixed up here. Okay. What does this minus, wherever it is, what does this minus sign mean? It just ref the direction of it going. Or turns the acting in the opposite direction of the displacement. Yeah. So in this case right here, what's the direction of the displacement? Therefore, the direction of the force would be, and I've already taken that into account right here. So I don't have to write the minus sign because I'm indicating the negative by saying, hey, it's going up. So the negative is a directional thing. All right, so we have this, so, and the displacement? Two meters. Yeah, you before said it stretches five meters. It doesn't stretch five meters, it only stretches two meters. It just naturally hangs at three meters. Oh. So it stretches two meters here. And so we set this equal to k times 2 meters. And so k is, as Deke was said, 